let's uh, try to go through what an image is. So because it'll be an important part of what we are talking about it in this chapter. So here's a maybe most common example of an image. I have a plain mirror here. Everything you see in this plain mirror right now is an image. So, um, so let me put this right here. So for people who are sitting along the center column, you are going to see yourself mostly, maybe your neighbor. People who are on this side, you'll see that other side. So uh, let's see. Uh, function, do you see Jason? Yeah. Okay, Jason, you see function? So what you are seeing in this mirror is an image of function. So where does it appear to be? If you are you know, caveman and you didn't know what mirror was, as you look at this, where would you think he was? Like through here, at some far distance away, you'd, you might think this is a transparent window and there's a person sitting over there, right? So um, in short, that's an image. Image is, um, image is a, a construct or abstract idea we use to describe when a, ray, some arrangement of light appears to be coming from some place that it's not actually coming from. So it, it is actually coming from function's location. The ceiling lights are reflecting off of him. Some of the light is coming to the mirror. It bounces according to the law of reflection that you know and it somehow reaches you, or reaches Jason. That's how you see those rays of light. But if you ignore how this optical element is modifying the light, it appears to be coming from a distance, coming from a particular place. So this, let me draw a diagram because it's hard to just point at things. So if you have, um, so if you have a, uh, let me draw the mirror here. If you have a mirror, for example, and you have something or someone over here, uh, I guess I'll draw a triangle, then um, when you look at this ray that's coming from this point on the triangle, it, um, this ray goes in many, um, so there's the light from here goes in many different directions. It's uh, what we call diffuse scattering, the light that's hitting most of the object, it scatters into many different directions. Um, I guess the contrast would be something that's in a very directional, like most of you cannot see this laser beam until I shine it directly into your eye. <laughs> so, um, so this would be a single ray of light, literally single ray of light that you won't see until it diffusely reflects from my hand. Um, but in everyday life, in most cases, you have diffuse reflection and light rays are going kind of everywhere. And for a particular person here, this particular ray of light um, would hit off of the mirror and it undergoes reflection the way we were describing last week. So angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and and someone who's present here sees this ray of light and to this person, to this observer, the, this ray of light appears to be coming from this direction. Appears to be coming from this direction that you would get when you extend this ray of light. Now, when you're just looking at it, you will see that there's a question that we left off unanswered. So Jason, once again, sorry, I, I'm sticking with the example I've used. When you see a function in this mirror, does he appear to be at a particular distance? Would you say he's a, you know, very, very, like, would you say that you could not tell if he's right here or if, if he's very, very far away? Or is there a very particular place where he appears to be? Um, okay, far away as in somewhere like over here, back here, right? Uh, but one thing you wouldn't say is that, you do not say that um, 
you would not say that you couldn't distinguish whether he's way over here versus whether he's over here. You can clearly see that he's not very close to the mirror. Right? So when you look at your images in the mirror, they actually appear to be at a particular location, not just one point along a line, but a very specific point along this line. And when you look at this tracing of a single ray, that is not what you get. Because whether this single ray, like this ray, could be coming from anywhere along this spot. But somehow, intuitively, when, you, when we look at things in mirror, what you know intuitively before I you know, prove it mathematically or whatever, is that you know the image of this point is kind of here. Like this is where the image is. It's not just anywhere along this line. So how would you get that? How would you sort of prove that the rays of light that's reflecting off of the mirror, they do really appear to be coming from this single point, not anywhere along this line? Okay, um, it happens to be the same distance here as here, but that sort of kind of sounds like a made up rule to me. As in, the rule makes a sense, right? That's the virtual image, right? The one that we see. Uh, I, I'll get to virtual soon enough. Um, so what Samuel was saying was that maybe the rule is that this distance is equal to this distance, which is true enough, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a general procedure. I want to, uh, find those procedure or rule that I can use, even for lenses, even for things that's nothing like a plane mirror. So this is what the problem comes down to. Problem comes down to trying to define a point. What geometric object do you need to define a point? Okay, if I have co two coordinates, I can do that. Uh, let me rephrase my question. I have one line already, right? And the way this point is going to be defined will have something to do with this line. It'll be along this line. So how, what else, what additional thing do I need in addition to this line in order to define this point geometrically? I need another line. When you have two non-collinear lines, where they cross can define a point. So that's what I'm going to need for here. I'm just going to need another set of lines. So graphically, this is what it is. I drew one ray. So what I should do is I should draw another set of rays. I should draw maybe another ray that reflects from not this point, but from this point. Uh, let me do it in different color. So, um, so the, the ray that's reflecting off of from here, it must have traveled in straight line from the, uh, this point to that point where it's reflecting. Right? I can draw this because I'm supposing there's infinitely many rays here. I never drew a comprehensive list of rays. I just drew a few as a representation. I'm just identifying one more that makes it convenient for me to do this. Um, all right, this ray will undergo the same reflection under the law of reflection. And because this angle of incidence is smaller, this angle of reflection will also be smaller. So it should be drawn at something like this. No, I'm trying to draw this correctly, right? Because of the difference in angles, you see they are diverging. Right? As they come to an observer who's somewhere out here, um, <laughs> the two, two rays are diverging. Uh, now what you see is that when you trace this ray back, they will cross at some point. And if you drew this drawing correctly with the rulers and protractors, you, see, you would see that they cross at the point where you are supposed to find the image. Why would it? Because you, point, you pointed them both to the right, but what if you pointed one to the left? You ah, one. you mean if I have this ray? Yeah. Well, the observer here will never see this ray, right? Yeah. But you know, even for this ray, if you draw it correctly, it should appear to come from this point. That is actually an amazing thing about image. Um, 
any light ray that's coming from this object, so let me actually use the term, any light that's coming from the object, and it first hits the mirror, and then goes to any observer, will appear to be coming from this image. So we will treat image, as far as optics is concerned, almost the same as object. This is a source of light, or we treat it like a source of light. Uh, any light that uh, you know, first goes through some particular condition will appear to be coming from this um, thing that we are going to call image.